All right, guys, I want to pick up on Revelation 17. Last time I read Revelations, I believe we, um, we were reading and I said we were going to pick up on verse 9. Well, let's go back up to the beginning. I want to explain this to you. Um, the great prostitute is what Revelation 17 speaks of. One of the seven angels who had poured out the seven bowls came over and spoke to me. Come with me, he said, and I will show you the judgment that is going to come on the great prostitute who rules over many waters. The kings of the world have committed adultery with her, and the people who belong to this world have been made drunk with the wine of her immorality. So the angel took me in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that had seven heads and ten horns. And blasphemies against God were written all over it. The woman was wore purple. She had scarlet clothing. She had beautiful jewelry made of gold and precious gems and pearls. In her hand, she had a gold goblet full of obscenities and the impurities of her immorality. A mysterious name was written on her forehead, Babylon the Great, mother of all prostitutes and obscenities in the world. I could see that she was drunk with the blood of God's holy people who were witnesses for Jesus. I stared at her in complete amazement. And this was when John was taken in the spirit. And then it says, why are you so amazed? The angel asked, I will tell you the mystery of this woman and of the beast with the seven heads and 10 horns on which she sits. The beast you saw was once alive, but isn't now. And yet he will soon come up out of the bottomless pit and go to eternal destruction. And the people who belong to this world, whose names were not written in the book of life before the world was made, will be amazed at the reappearance of this beast who had died. And then, let me tell you who the great prostitute is before we get to verse 9. The great prostitute is the church is the church and the seven heads are the leaders that sit upon the church who lead the church it says this calls for a mind with understanding the seven heads of the beast represent the seven hills where the woman rules so the church is ruling on seven hills uh, they also represent seven kings Five kings have already fallen, the sixth now reign, and the seventh is yet to come, but his reign will be brief. The scarlet beast that was, but is no longer, is the eighth king. He is like the other seven, and he too is headed for destruction. The ten horns of the beast are ten kings who have not yet risen to power, they will be appointed to their kingdoms for one brief moment to reign with the beast. They will all agree to give him their power and authority. Together, they will go to war against the lamb, but the lamb will defeat them because he is Lord of all lords and he is king of all kings. And his called and chosen and faithful ones will be with him when he defeats the beast from the bottom's pit. Then the angel said to me, the waters where the prostitute is ruling represent masses of people of every nation and language. And the scarlet beast and his 10 horns all hate the prostitute. They will stir, they will strip her naked, eat her flesh and burn her remains with fire. The God, for God has put a plan into their minds, a plan that will carry out this, his purpose. They will agree to give their authority to the scarlet beast, to the leader of this church, to give their authority to the scarlet beast. So the words of God will be fulfilled. And this woman you saw in your vision represents the great city that rules over the kings of the world. So we're talking about the fall of Babylon Empire going into verse 18. Now, the leader 
of this great prostitute is the leader of the church. Whoever is going to be put into power um, is going to be the next king. It's 8, 9, 10. It's going to be 10. So it says the seventh is yet to come. So it's going to be a seventh king. He's going to be in reign for a brief time. And then there's going to be an eighth king who is sort of like the other seven. And he's going to head for destruction as well. And the ten horns and the ten beasts are ten kings. So there's going to be two more kings after the eighth king. Um, I'm going to explain to you more in detail. But the church is the great prostitute. And this suddenly... Uh, glimmed upon me today because I said, Lord, help me to understand. And I really didn't want to read about the ending of 17, but I need to finish this because tomorrow I want to do another verse. Uh, I was listening to one of the people I follow. I can't remember her name, but she said something she quoted from last year about fornication. And God dropped it in my spirit about the spirit of fornication. So I'm going to be reading uh, Galatians and 1 Corinthians about the spirit of fornication. And so I said, this has to do with sex. People that are having sexual spirits and bad spirits. And so when she spoke about this, um, the lady who I follow, I, I should have remembered her name. She said she had a dream. And then she had to tell us about her dreams all the time, right? She told us that um, there was a rug laid out and she said that God was married. He was coming to, to, to marry, you know, his bride. He was coming for his bride. When he decided, you know, like a man come home for his wife or whatever, his bride had played the harlot and she went out with some other people. You know, she went out into the world. So when the bride came home to take possession the bridegroom came home he had nobody to take possession or he could only take a few he could only take a few he couldn't take all because they had played the harlot and she said somehow she <coughs> was explaining how this was the church and this is the church because the Lord said in the last day, he's going to separate the wheat from the tares. And he says, uh, everybody that's in the church is not of the Holy Spirit. Some people are in the church, but they are doing other things. So the bride, the bridegroom is coming for the true believer. Even the people, some of the people that are in the church are still going to be left behind here because they did not receive ask to receive, ask to repent, and change their ways, and go after what's right. And so, she was explaining her dream. And it just gleamed upon me. I said, let me go read Revelation 17. And when I say the great prostitute, the great prostitute is the church. Shockingly enough, you would think, oh, everything in the church is fine. No, it's not. No, it's not. The great prostitute there are people fornicating. Fornication is following idols. It's following whatever your heart desires. You follow the desires of the world and you're mixing in with different spirits that are taking you away from the things of Jesus Christ. And then God said, I come and I come quickly. When he comes, you're out there doing something you're not supposed to be doing. You're out there fornicating. It's like you, your husband, you know, maybe he's a truck driver or maybe he works somewhere outside the house, right? He left the home, right? He said, you have everything, all your needs are met. Just, you know, keep the house clean because I'll be coming home the weekend or whatever. You can't wait till he get out the door. You're going to get on your high heels and your dress. You're going out to meet another man. You're going out to uh, sit at the bar, wink your eyes at somebody else, but yet you're married, got a ring on, or you took it off, put on the other hand, whatever. This is what the people in the church are doing. They go to church on Sunday, and some of them, the next day, they're out doing their own thing. I'm guilty of it. I haven't been out doing my own thing, you know. I, I don't go out and do sexual perversions and things that people do, but I'm not perfect, you know. 
But you have to repent and get right with God, whoever you are. You know, if you're going to call yourself, going to church, going to church. And some people going to church, going to church, and they know their hearts are not right. And they constantly keep doing the same thing over and over. God is not, God is not happy with that. He's not happy with that at all. So we all must repent so that we won't fall short of the glory of God. All right, I'll talk to you later. The great prostitute is the church. He's going to separate the wheat from the tare. Now, when we're really talking about these leaders and different things, this, this is like a major church, seven kings. We're talking about who's in power overseas in the churches. Look at who's making the decisions in the churches overseas. I'm not for sure if it's the Catholic Church or the Prime Minister. When you're looking at that, that's your prophetic word right there. I'll talk to you later.